All right, we are at five after now, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I know Chris Ferris is out, so I'll help uh, just facilitate the call for this this week. Um, I think let's start with the TSC election results, uh, just because that informs the TSC for today's call. Uh, so I sent an email out shortly ago. Uh, really excited to see the new TSC. You know, please join me in welcoming the uh, new 11 folks. You can see it on the agenda slide here. Um, but those new and returning TSC members are Arno, Gaohua, Bin, Chris, Dan, Greg, Hart, Jonathan, Kelly, Mick, and Nathan. From that, we are going to send out an email to them today to begin the nomination process for the chair position. Uh, that will be open for a period of one week, at which point then the election will kick off uh, and we'll collect votes on that for one week. So two weeks from today, we will announce uh, the chair for the TSC. In terms of checking for quorum, I think quite a few people are on summer holidays this week. So I don't suspect we're gonna reach quorum to be able to vote on anything today. Um, but from an attendance standpoint of the new 11 TSC members, so far I see Arno, Greg, Hart, and Jonathan. Have any of the other uh, others joined? So Bauhoff, Vin, Chris, Dan, Kelly, Mick, or Nathan? This is Nathan. I'm on the call. Hey, Nathan. Welcome. Yes, I'm on the call too. Hi, guys. Hey, Jonathan. I got you. All right. So we are at 5 of 11, uh, quite a bit shy from quorum. Um, that's fine, we can still move forward, just no votes for today. Uh, we can move a lot of the discussion to email, uh, and if we need to vote on something, that can be an email vote, or we can push that to the following week. So moving forward from there, uh, the next agenda item, HackFest planning. Uh, so the Chicago HackFest, September 21st and 22nd in Chicago. If you're planning to attend, please register as soon as possible. Uh, really excited to see that. We have the draft agenda, already seen quite a few topics in there. Uh, anything else you want to see get covered, discussed, or something you may want to present on, please drop it in there. We will run this in on-conference format uh, like all the other uh, hackfests. And then in terms of Europe, we are still trending towards late October. Uh, we're evaluating several locations. Uh, we hope to have that finalized in the next week or two so we can get the registration site up for that uh, and people can begin booking travel for that. Any questions? Oh, Yes, or no? Yeah, on the the October, the October one. So the latest dates I saw were oh, on the weekend at the end of October. Is that still your favorite option or the the? Uh, uh, good question. It's unclear at this point. Uh, we had a solid option that was going to work at that time. Uh, there were some things that prevented us from moving forward with that. So now we're a bit back to to the drawing board and evaluating some different options, which does impact the dates. Uh, so no, it's not certain that it would be that weekend. Uh, but as soon as we have some more details, um, or better clarity, we'll come back to this group, uh, with, with what that looks like, but no, um, no dates okay. in stone right now. As far as I'm concerned, this is good news because I, I, I would rather not have the meeting on weekend, but I will oblige if needed. What I didn't quite understand, quite frankly, and I thought you might clarify, maybe I missed it before, but we had a we had a doodle poll, and then we had some dates, and then somehow we we're ignoring those dates. What happened to that? Yeah, Can so you this, remind? Yeah, good questions. Uh, so this came up on the TSC call a couple weeks ago. Uh, there was the doodle poll. There were two preferred weeks that were towards the end of October. Uh, the discussion from that was essentially uh, on one side of those dates was the member summit in Singapore. On the other side, I believe was Money 2020 or some other industry events. Yeah, uh, and the true. discussion there uh, eventually resulted in landing in the middle, um, which was that weekend, I believe. And the other consideration was just around the uh, Halloween holiday, which uh, for people with families right. and children really wanted to avoid. Uh, so that's why we had honed in on the weekend. But uh, at this point, that venue option isn't going to work. So we're going to have to reevaluate a few things and... Um, you know, until we have some okay. more clarity on options, there's, you know, not much we can figure right. out. Or I'm, I'm no, that's all right. I understand. Obviously, I'm sure you know that the sooner we set all these dates, the better, because I have a whole bunch of other things in the mix, and I keep postponing to answer definitively based on that. So, yes. uh, Absolutely. Completely understand. And 
we'll we'll try to get this sorted out as soon as possible. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions on those topics before we move on? All right. Sounds good. Uh, so, Mark, I think this is, assuming you're on the call, this is back to you. Um, a couple weeks ago, you had raised the charter for the Performance and Scalability Working Group. Uh, there were some comments from the TSC which got factored in. Um, so I think at this point, you factor those in. Um, I believe two weeks ago on the call, we didn't have quorum then, and also you wanted to bring this back to the performance and scale uh, working group just to get their approval. Um, is there anything, uh, any updates you want to add at this point from there? I know we won't be able to vote as we're not at quorum, um, but any discussion to close out, and we can either move to an email vote or uh, postpone a vote to a subsequent TSC call. So at this point, um, I've missed the last two performance and scale um, working group calls because of personal issues. Um, but the main stick up with the, pro, um, with the working group is they want more clarification on rough consensus. Um, I've tried to stick with what the other working groups have done. So I need to go and have a talk with a working group and uh, get that resolved. So technically we haven't voted on it yet because okay. people want more clar more clarification on rough consensus if there's any guidelines or suggestions people want to make um you know open to that okay and i think uh our no and maybe i think it was our no or rom had sent on some stuff i believe that the w3c uses or potentially another group um yes this is rom i think we... the ips uh, uh, guidelines i think Yes, Bram sent the IETF stuff, and I send the WPC one. Right, and and so the question would be, do we, um, you know, how complicated do we want the charter to be? Um, well, I don't think the idea was to for you to to really encompass any of this or include any of this in the charter. It was just to say, you know, decisions are made by consensus, and then you vote. Uh, you know, it's the chair's responsibility to figure out when that doesn't work and the symbol vote needs to be used. But, uh, and you know, I don't think the charter right. needs to get into any of these details. It really right. I didn't, was sent as, you know, recommendations or guidelines. I didn't, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. There were some members on the call that felt they wanted more specifics. So I will get that resolved following your guidelines. Okay. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and as an example, in the architecture work group, we, uh, we just mentioned that uh, decisions would be made by rough consensus without detailing exactly what rough consensus means, um, and you know that's worked out fine in our group. Yeah, and I think I cut and pasted that. So that should be fine. All right. So, Mark, it sounds like um, you'll raise this in the next PSWG. Uh, meeting and then we can uh, bring that back onto the TSC agenda at that point. Yes. All right. Uh, sounds good. Thank you for driving this along. All right. Any any questions, comments there before we move on to the uh, final topic for today? All right. Sounds good. Um, so checking quick is uh, Howdrin Joe on the call. Yeah, I'm here. All right. So, uh, Houdrin, um submitted a proposal, the Hyperledger Caliper project uh, that hit the mailing list a couple days ago. So, I think for the call today, um, Houdrin, if you want to do an overview and um, whatnot for what you're proposing, I know ideally we'll move a lot of the discussion onto the mailing list just to be really inclusive of everyone across time zones. Um, but let me... Uh, give you some time to walk through your proposal with the group. Uh, okay, yes, I can introduce that. So, shall I uh, share my screen? Yeah, that works. I've just given you uh, presenter capability. There you go.
Okay, can uh, everybody see my screen? Yep, we can see it. Okay, okay, good. And uh, okay, so uh, this is Hao Jun Zhou from uh, Huawei, and uh, I'm very happy to introduce the project Caliper at this meeting. So uh, basically, Caliper is a blockchain benchmark framework which is designed to integrate with multiple blockchain systems and uh, try to help people to evaluate the performance of the, the blockchain system. Because we all know the performance is one of the key, key concerns for customers. However, currently, uh, we think there is not a widely accepted uh, test framework for blockchain. Uh, so uh, there are some uh, test tools for uh, for different uh, blockchain system. Uh, for example, uh, for Fabric, there are PTE uh, yeah, for Fabric, but uh, it only support uh, hybrid Fabric. And we also found there is a, a project named the Blockbench, which is de developed by National University of Singapore and uh, Zhejiang University, where the, the Blockbench provides a benchmark for, uh, framework for uh, multiple blockchain platform, including uh, Fabric 0.6, Ethereum, and uh, Parity. Uh, we think this is a good framework for re reference, but uh, it does not uh, support uh, Fabric 1.0 and uh, other hybrid block blockchain platforms like uh, Sotus. And uh, neither does it provide a, a pl pluggable capability for supporting multiple test cases. Uh, so, uh, why, why we think uh, uh, we need such a framework? Uh, we think uh, there are three main reasons. The first one is that uh, some blockchain solutions may claim some performance results, but how the results are, are achieved is usually undisclosed. So it is hard to perform the evaluation and uh, impossible to uh, perform the same evaluation on different uh, blockchain projects. And uh, the second reason is that there is uh, not a uh, uh, common definition of uh, performance indicators. So it is, it is impossible to compare two performance results if their meanings are not the same. Uh, by the way, PSWG is doing this work now and uh, that's, uh, that's uh, very great. And the third, third reason is that we think there is uh, no common accepted uh, benchmark use cases. So blockchain performance may be different in different scenarios. So how to define the scenarios is very important for uh, such a benchmark framework. And uh, so based on the above those reasons, we think there are three goals for, uh, main goals for Calimper. The first goal is to provide a benchmark framework that supports multiple blockchain systems. Uh, the uh, framework should be pluggable to make it easy to integrate new blockchain systems. Uh, also, a set of uh, blockchain and uh, northbound uh, interfaces are provided to help directors to write unified tests for uh, those multiple uh, blockchain systems. And uh, the third goal is that uh, Caliper should work together with the uh, performance and uh, scalability working group and to make sure that the performance indicators that are defined in PSWG are correctly implemented. And the third goal is that uh, Caliper is trying to provide some benchmark cases uh, for typical blockchain scenarios. That would help people to understand blockchain performance on those scenarios. Uh, again, the use cases uh, we think should be discussed together in PSWG and uh, we can implement those use cases in Caliper. So what's the status of Caliper? And uh, uh, Caliper is an internal project started in Huawei in May. And uh, now it is uh, open source and uh, available on GitHub. Uh, the reference is uh, uh, in this document. So if you are interested in it, you can uh, find it here. Uh, uh, about Caliper and uh, uh, gen in general, as a framework has uh, three main layers from bottom to top. And the first layer is a uh, adaptation, adaptation layer, which is used to integrate special blockchain system into Caliper system. And uh, each, uh, each adapter implements Caliper-defined common blockchain network 
uh, uh, NBI is using corresponding blockchain's uh, native SDK or RESTful API. And uh, we now support uh, Apache Fabric 1.0 and uh, Sotos. And the second layer is, uh, uh, we call it uh, the interface layer, which provides uh, some uh, northbound interfaces for upcoming, up, uh, for up applications, include some uh, blockchain operating related interfaces, uh, resource monitoring related interfaces, and uh, some performance element related uh, uh, interfaces. And uh, the top layer is the uh, application layer. So test the use cases I implemented in this layer. And uh, now we also talked with uh, some companies, uh, include uh, Bitwise, Hypechain, Oracle, Monex, Suramitosu, and uh, all those companies are very interested in it and uh, promised to uh, contributes to you at if it, if the project is uh, it's approved. Okay. And uh, now the first step of this uh, project is to uh, provide a benchmark framework, uh, which is capable to run both Fabric and the Salt to Flake benchmarks. And uh, the next step, we think we should uh, work together with PSWG to define the um, performance indicators and the use cases and uh, implement those, uh, those in Caliper. And uh, the, how to evaluate the success of the project, we think that uh, uh, the success of the project can be that uh, if the uh, project can attract, attract, attract many users within or out of the community to use it as a benchmark framework. And uh, so if, if other if other projects show up and the community is more interested in putting um, more sources over it, and we think it's okay, the project should be closed. Okay, that's my uh, um, that's my introduction. Great, thank you. So a quick question. Um, when you say okay. parity, we're talking about the, 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 the parity browser? Uh, so, sorry, I can't hear you. Can you? So, please? you said so. The framework currently supports uh, Fabric zero point six, and you're working on one zero. There's Ethereum and yeah. the Parity browser. Is that? So, you 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 talk about the block bench? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. This is another project which is uh, developed by some universities. Okay, so, so I, I'm trying to understand what, what is already working and what is what needs to be done. I didn't understand that. So can I uh, can yeah. I run benchmark now of TPS on Fabric One Zero if I want to try it? Uh, yes, uh, yes, you can you can uh, write a uh, test these cases now. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, I think I can answer the question. Um, for Caliper, it now supports Fabric 1.0 and uh, current version of Salsa Slate. And uh, you can uh, go to the GitHub page, uh, download the project and the run benchmark. Uh, we now have uh, TPS and uh, latency supported. And at the meantime, it can monitor the resource usage of the a uh, blockchain system where um, the testing is running above it. Okay, I, I'll play with it. So I just, just just very quickly, what is the setup? Because if I change the setup in Fabric, and it's true for most blockchains, right? Then I will have different results, right? If I have different peers, different orders, like how, do, how, how can I compare? I think, by the way, just to say, first, it's very useful to have such a tool. Just hands down, like no question. So first of all, thank you very much. Yes. I'm trying to understand how we can use it. This is why I'm like, I'm so excited, that's why. Uh, so, currently you can use a com configuration file to define the backend uh, network. So you can define how, how many peers and, uh, and the address of orders and the, and the uh, gRPC address of the benchmark test 
the test cases can use this configuration file to interact with the backend blockchain system. Understood, understood. Okay, so I can configure it in the tool and the tool will set up a demo setup and then we'll test it. Is that correct? Uh, now uh, no, we don't support uh, set up your network uh, automatically. So you, oh, so you need I to set up your network. So I set up your network. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. So I have a different question. This is Arno. Um, I mean, given that there are other projects, including this blog bench, have you reached out to them? Would they be interested in joining your effort? Uh, and, and, uh, uh, basically, no, not not yet. Because we because uh, we, we looked at the look at the project and uh, it is not uh, updated since the like uh, half years. So we oh. developed a uh, we developed a benchmark frame uh, frame of files. Yeah, and it is also from university, so it's probably a student project. And then after that, after the semester is over, it's probably gone. <laughs> but th that's very possible, bit. But you know, yeah. I think this kind of efforts, I I hate to see you know competing efforts by accident, you know, or accidents. Yeah, I mean, right? Yeah, and then so I think it would make sense to reach out to say, hey, we are interested in launching this effort within Hyperledger. Is that something you would be interested in joining and you know get an answer? And then if you don't get an answer, it's an answer by itself, right? But uh... right, and, and the working group has discussed reaching out to the block bench people. We we reviewed their things and didn't like some of their conclusions and um, their test framework. But now that we're moving ahead to potential projects, we uh, can take that up as well. Question I would have, are you folks going to be, Caliper folks going to be in Chicago? Should we put something on the agenda to, to you know, pull people together and, and go through this in more detail in Chicago? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Victor, are you going to Chicago? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, in PSW2G meeting two days ago, uh, I have uh, talked with Marta that I cannot attend Chicago's meeting, and uh, she told me we can uh, have next uh, hack fest in Europe. We can discuss at that time. And at that meeting, I think Marta says we are good to go from PSWG's perspective. Okay, yeah, I was just curious. So. Uh, just to clarify, what I said is uh, that from my personal perspective, I think it's a good project and I think that you should be proposing it to Technical Steering Committee. I did not say that uh, I say for the Technical Steering Committee or on behalf of Technical Steering Committee that you should, uh, that you are good to go. Uh, but yes, I said that uh, you, that, that there will be a hack fest in uh, Europe and that uh, this is probably a better time since you can't go to uh, Chicago. All right, other, other questions or comments from the TSC or Technical Steering Committee at this point. Uh, um, this the, is I, yeah, go ahead. Um, I think in the document, the concern was raised about how do we make sure that the tests that are being used continue to be fair or represent the, the different projects appropriately. Um, from what I'm hearing from the maintainers, they're taking a very even-handed approach about this. Um, but it's something that we'll just want to be aware of and careful about as we go forward um, with how we publish those benchmarks. I think Jonathan's comment reflected that the details of how things are configured are going to matter a great deal, um, especially for some of the use case specific um, blockchains like Indy, um, making a comparison that actually makes sense between, you know, like an identity ledger and a general purpose smart contract ledger um, are going to be 
difficult, but it looks like the tool itself um, will support setting up a lot of different kinds of environments. So I'm, I'm excited for the idea that we can have some common tooling to help us uh, uh, make more apples to apples comparisons. Okay, so you bring an interesting but important point. I mean, the publication of benchmark results. I don't know that this is on the table right now. I would be very worried about doing anything like this. It always raises liability issues, which I don't think any one of us want to get in. I think they should solely be focusing on developing the tool for people to use for themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all, all, all what we want to do. We want yeah. to want, don't want to publish uh, any uh, benchmark results. We just provide the tool. Yeah, I, I think that's my interpretation of this document as well. I have not looked at the uh, the code yet, but my interpretation is that this is a framework, uh, and each implementation of blockchain technology would plug in their specifics to drive. Uh, the performance uh, using this tool. So it's just a framework that allow us to, you know, to plug in stuff to drive, you know, the, each of the implementations specifically. There's differences and of course there are always differences between implementation. Uh, so each plug in would be able to take care of that. And especially when, you know, the working group, the performance working group agreed on a set of metrics uh, that we need to to provide uh, measurement for, uh, then then that's good. Then you know, with a tool like this, we all can provide plug-in so that we can come up with with uh, the measurements for those uh, agreed upon metrics. Um, so I, I I'm all supporting for this. Uh, we we we're not calling for a vote, but uh, you know, from early at this point, I'm I'm all support for this. This is Greg. I would echo the same sentiment. I, I, I'm on the phone, so I haven't had a chance to see the slides or really review the doc uh, too deeply, but I, I think it's a good idea in general, especially, I mean, even just within one project, just to have a facility to, to test various configs. Good. Yeah, I agree with everybody. Um, you know, this is a fantastic tool, and uh, I'm definitely in favor of it. Um, I, as I've pointed out, I think we need to be careful about how we uh, publicize test results. So um, we should probably have, I mean, this doesn't have to be in the proposal, but I think you guys should think about how you might want to handle uh, the situation if someone, you know, claims something or, or things like that. Because even if the official group doesn't publish tests, you know, what happens if you know, Jonathan publishes some test on his blockchain, and then I publish some test on my blockchain, and, and we get different results. Um, it could be, it would be very confusing for the community, um, and, and I, th I think it's something we should think about. That's all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We all have the same reservations. I think. Right. We're all concerned about publishing material. Um, we can also generalize it into how can we reproduce results, right? So if I run something on my laptop and I'm gonna also publish the spec of my laptop, you don't know what I run on my laptop in addition. The reason I was asking about the setup is maybe, it's just a suggestion, I'm not, it's not a call for action, right? But a suggestion would be that maybe the tool will have a simulated version. So, okay, there are two parts, right? One part is it's always nice to have a monitoring tool kind of to examine an existing system. So I just come in and I plug in my monitor and I just have a look at, you know, CPU usages, uh, TPS, whatever we have there, right? The, the, the throughput, the three, the two or three measurements that we have. Another option is to say, when we want to test uh, a setup, we can pre-establish a setup with a configuration file, and then we can run it. In this way, it's not, it's not, again, it's not, it's not bulletproof or watertight, but we can try it to compare, for example, what, what is nice is to be able to rerun the same thing, let's say on a weekly build, and take a look at the performance of Fabric week after week, and to do the same thing on, on Sotus and the same thing on, on Monarch or Ethereum. It, it doesn't matter like on what platform, but just to see some graph and to see are we improving, are we regressing. Uh, but the, the nice thing is 
we will try to run it on the same platform, the same hardware, and maybe that can be an indication. We can still play with these numbers as well, but I'm just trying to see like, if we can be as neutral as possible, I think that that should be a goal, right? Just a suggestion. Yeah, well, I, we, I think it's a good suggestion, and uh, uh, we should uh, study how to automatically uh, set up a, a blockchain network. Uh, I think a system on the tester could be reproducible. It's very important, and currently we're trying to use Copper Compose to build a, a system. And uh, as in our plan, in the future, we're trying to integrate with Cello and uh, ask Cello to provide a such system for benchmark. And I think uh, providing different kinds of system is the main purpose of Cello. And uh, about the uh, benchmark results, as uh, Hao Jun has mentioned before, the Caliper is not intended to publish any uh, benchmarking to, uh, results. It's only a tool provided for customers. The only advantage customer can get from the tool is that they can run the same test uh, on different uh, uh, blockchain systems. And uh, uh, having different results can be uh, also common because different uh, blockchain systems can have different uh, performance uh, depending on different uh, use cases. So yeah. there is set up use case topology, definitely. Mm -hmm. I can write different chain code and on different machines it will be, of course. Definitely. Yes, yes. Right. I think the main thing is that if I run the test 10 times in a row on the same setup, I need to get fairly consistent results. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I think this should also take uh, under consideration. Maybe run multiple times and uh, have some average or a monitor curve, a monitored curve about the performance changing. Uh, it depends on how the metrics are defined. I think uh, both PSWG and the Caliper projects should also oh, should uh, should both working on that. So I, I have a question. This might be stupid because I'm not familiar with the details, but would it be conducive to automation, like through a CI pipeline to, to do regression testing? Yeah, um, that's what I wrote on the chat, but I think so. I think it can be useful. I, I, I think maybe it's not an <laughs> uh, original purpose of the tool uh, because the paper is in, is designed for uh, blockchain system users. It's not for developers. So I think um, working as a CI pipeline is uh, more focused focused on identifying flaws or bugs in code, but, um, but, but anyway, if uh, you guys think it's necessary, we can take it uh, also under consideration as a future plan. So I, I wonder if, in fact, the goal should be revised and, you know, it invites the kind of problems we're talking about, you know, of people using these to publish results, which, you know, with all the caveats that have been mentioned. And uh, maybe it shouldn't be, you know, described as something for people to use to compare one framework against another, even though it's it's an obvious and interesting, you know, uh, use case for it. At least we should have, you know, proper um, warnings in the description. On every yeah, button. exactly. <laughs> yes. hey, is it, watch is out, this... you know, don't jump into using this and stop publishing because there's all these problems we know it's really meant for people to use for their own purposes. Isn't this always been, hasn't this always been true for benchmarking of anything and everything? I mean, CPU benchmarking, graphics cards benchmarking, I think it's always been a problem. You can always gain benchmarks to make it look like your GPU is faster than your competitors. 
Um, I think you're we'll, right, but that's why benchmarks often are standardized because they go through this process, painful the process of people agreeing on the set of benchmarks. So they with all the politics the and the multiplication, right? They publish the matrices. Right. Look at the refactoring. Yeah. Maybe we should try to do. And then that's what I was asking. If the configuration is part of the setup, so that we can rerun the configuration and try to reproduce, and I say, look, I run it on four nodes. You know, yeah, ten times this is the average. I run it on six nodes. This is the average. And then people can actually think about the topology, for example. So that we, I'm trying. We're all. By the way, Victor, we're all trying to think about how can we use the tool in a way that actually not risking. You know, no, it will have more benefits than us embracing something that will backfire on us because that may be, that's the concern, right? That it may be the TSC approved kind of de facto standard. And then people say, hey, we use your tool. Look, this is this is the result. So we, we need to like really be careful. So, I, I think everybody agrees on that one. And um, I think that trying to standardize the benchmarks is outside the scope of, of the project to build this tool. I think. If we focus on the value of this tool allowing the developers to um, use track it. whether they're whether they're improving or regressing is probably I mean that's reason enough to build this tool. Um, yes. But I, I don't think we should get off into the weeds about trying to make standardized, you know, no, no, performance but that wasn't tests and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, the, the I, I suggestion just... is not to do this. Uh, the, the suggestion is really to make sure that people are not misusing it and, and falling into all these problems we're uh, talking about. Oh, yeah. I mean, I get that. I, I think just standard language of, you know, <laughs> there is no such thing as a standard benchmark for these um, uh, blockchains. And this is really just a tool for developers to measure, um, you know, which way they're going when they make changes. Right. Uh, I That's think goes against the what the how the how how the benchmark is made is not necessary, but uh, standardize how the matrix is defined is necessary. Uh, I know some uh, blockchain systems claim that they may have millions of transactions per second, but uh, uh, the reason they have such high TPS is that the definition of TPS. Is not as usual as others, so this is misleading to customers. But I don't think uh, it's uh, done only by Caliper project. I think SWG can do the work better, and uh, Caliper can help to define this matrix. Uh, and this part, I think, it should be standardized. But how to make the benchmark? Uh, it, it it's Caliper's uh, task. It is not a de facto standard, but um, following the definition that PSWD has already made. Mark was trying when, to say something. Yeah, I was going to say when I proposed the Performance and Scale Working Group in, in DC, one of the things was people want a tool that will fairly measure across all blockchain and distributed ledger implementation. So in theory, we could throw Go Ethereum in, in it and other things. And Brian was clear he wanted something that was like a matrix to help people pick the right solution for their for their thing. You know, Fabric may not be the right solution for everything. Sawtooth Lake might not be the right solution for everything. And so I'm a little confused because I hear people saying we only want to use this tool for development to go figure stuff out. But I thought part of the performance and scale working group's goal was to go off and define what an industry benchmark should be and work across the industry to get there. So I agree with you that, you know, when Dave said earlier, we shouldn't standardize benchmark, I was thinking, well, that's what the PSW is doing. Oh, that's what I think it's doing in a way. But uh, the tool itself, I think it's mostly, you know, my concern is not, I mean, is mostly in the this idea of us, uh, the meaning the hyperledger, publishing results. I don't know that we want to go in there. Then there's the question of, you know, if people use it, use the tool to do this kind of stuff, we should have all the 
you know, warnings necessary to ensure that people do that with all the right information so that indeed, as Jonathan was saying, at least people could reproduce the results. Right, and that was one of, you know, my thoughts all along is, you know, having worked with spec and things like that, that anything you do needs to be reproducible and you have to give all the information so people can take identical hardware, identical software and reproduce your results. Um, so I think, you know, calipers popped up in the last couple of weeks. I haven't really had a time to sit down because I've missed the last meetings um, and go over things with, you know, my thoughts on some of the things. I think, you know, we're going to get there um, and I think it's a good start. Yeah, I think that, I mean, part of the issue is with reproducibility is that a lot of this is going to, a lot of the results have the potential to depend on network topology. So if I'm running on a different network than you, my results might be dramatically different. Um, and and this leads to, you know, possibly gaming the system where my blockchain might be worse than yours, but if I can somehow manipulate the topology to my advantage, I can claim better results. I don't have to do this through the Hyperledger. I can just do this on my own project and I can say like, oh, Caliper says, you know, my blockchain is, is better. Um, so, 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 I mean, that's kind of the, the drawback, I think, or that, that's the concern everybody has. Um, and my opinion on this is we should recommend strongly that people, uh, people test out for themselves, that they set up blockchains and they run Caliper, you know, on their application. Uh, before making a final decision. Yes, uh, totally uh, agree with this part. And that's exactly what I'm thinking about. Sorry, I. Uh, sorry. Uh, Amata, uh, please go ahead. Sir, thank you. It's Marta. Uh, how about uh, we build into Calipo uh, a Part, as a part of requirement or as a part of the framework or so that uh, together with the results uh, of the framework or the, to, to, together of the measure results of the measurements metadata is uh, published which means uh, uh, you know what uh, what settings were used uh, what parameters were used and so on and so forth so that you can't really publish uh, the sole results, but it always is attached. You have always attached the uh, whole setting of uh, how 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 the the tool was set. Yeah, and that's where I was hoping the performance and scale working group would get to is defining a lot of these things. We can put in the software license that you can't publish results without including the output of everything that we generate, things like that. Um, so that, you know, people need to fully disclose what we feel are, is important. I agree. Uh, if people want to publish the result, it should also provide the configuration files and all the description of the system on the test and so that others can make use these configuration files to to reproduce the test. If you don't mind, guys, uh, let me give me some time. I'll play with it, and, and I can give some more feedback. It sounds good. It sounds promising. I, I, I hear the concerns. Let's see if we can, if we, if, if it can help and. If if Mark will feel that we can use it, and I I'll, I'll try to see if, if 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 I can help as well, maybe I can be helpful. Okay, with pleasure. Thanks, guys. I um maybe we can keep discussing it uh, by email. Yeah, I think sure. We have already sent the proposal to the mailing list. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. No problem, no problem. I may have questions, and if. Do you want to guide me to stuff with pleasure? Let me spend some time. And uh, yeah, with pleasure. Cool. So a, a procedural question for the TSC. Um, last time we discussed the performance and scale working group, they wanted me to add that the 
working group would oversee projects regarding benchmarking and scalability. Um, so it would seem that this would fit the case that the PSWG would be overseeing this project in addition to the TSC. Is that everyone's understanding? Yes. Sure. I mean, I think the, the proposal, you know, highlights the need to cooperate with the PSWG. So that makes sense to me. All right, sounds good. So it sounds like the further discussion will then get moved on to the mailing list uh, where the proposal was uh, originally sent to and uh, continued collaboration with PSWG. Any other final questions or thoughts uh, before we wrap up for the day? All right, hearing none, then uh, it sounds like let's give everyone 10 minutes back. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all the team. Everyone, have a good day. Bye guys. By the way, I'm very Bye. happy to be part of Thanks. this. Thanks, guys. Thank you.